Good evening, everyone. I'm Susie Garrow. Tyler's off tonight. Well, Wall Street doesn't usually get excited about a two-point move in stocks, but today was different and historic. It took just a two-point gain for the S&P 500 index to cross and close above the 2000 level, its 30th record so far this year. There was some euphoria about the Dow as well. The blue chip average hit a record high of 17,153 in intraday trading, but pulled back by the close. Some good economic news helped fuel today's gains. Consumer confidence rose more than expected this month, climbing to its highest level since 2007. Also driving stocks, an unusually high number for big-ticket orders called durable goods. Those orders jumped last month more than 22 percent, but that was skewed by international demand for aircraft and record orders. Here's a uh, look at today's closing digits. The Dow added 30 points, the Nasdaq up 13, and the S&P edged up two points to that new milestone, 2,000.02. Our guest watched every move of the S&P today. After all, Aaron Gibbs is the equity chief investment officer with S&P Capital IQ, and she joins us now. Aaron, so nice to have you with us. Thank you. All right. So uh, it looks like the S&P 500 index is on track for its best August since the year 2000, so 14 years. How do you see things going between now and the end of the year? The S&P is now at 2000. Do you see it going higher, uh, going down, or just stay the same? Um, I really expect it to about stay the same for the rest of the year. It's somewhat dependent on the Federal Reserve. If right now Wall Street is expecting the Federal Reserve to raise rates around the second quarter of next mm -hmm. year, if they decide to or indicate that they're going to raise rates earlier in 2015, we could see a bit of a correction starting at the end of this year. Because right, that is the question that a lot of people are wondering now that it's gotten this high. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it time you know, that we're going to see a correction? What are the chances of that happening, you think? Uh, it's, again, it's really dependent on the Federal Reserve, and again, and that's dependent on wage growth and indications of inflation. Um, but overall, the S&P looks very good. Uh, mm -hmm. Earnings and fundamentals are very strong, mm -hmm. and uh, it just that we're, we're getting close to the top of valuation range. We're getting, you know, a little mm -hmm. pricey. Uh, so I, I think our appreciation for the rest of the year is, is somewhat limited. Well, you know, that's exactly the point that many individual investors are, like, kicking themselves, saying, you know, why didn't I put in money sooner? We have the S&P up 8.5% so far this year, and they're wondering, like, has it gotten too expensive and it's too late for me to get in? Now, you, you say there's still a couple of stock areas where investors can make some money for the rest of this year and beyond. One category that you've identified you call retailers in transition. Which is the retailer that you're recommending most right now? Uh, so one of the retailers that I like that is is definitely a value play. It, it's trading at only uh, what we call 13 times, uh, 13 and a half times forward earnings, which is basically just a lot cheaper than everybody else, a lot cheaper than its peers. Is Fossil Fossil Group? Um, it sells watches, and it's it's been struggling this year as it transitions to more online sell, sales as well as uh, issuing new product lines. They're doing a lot of watches with designers like Michael Kors and Turi Burke. Mm -hmm. They're also uh, issuing some, uh, looking at new smartphone watches. Mm -hmm. okay. And so this has come with some increased costs, but we're looking for that growth to really ramp up okay. next year. Another category that you have, this next group, you call high-quality winners that have been returning cash to investors. And you talk about Apple. Now, here's a stock that is trading at a, a new record high. Uh, why Apple? So one, Apple is a stock that you can buy, and I, I don't necessarily advocate market timing. That's very difficult to do. Apple, you can just buy at any time. They offer mm -hmm. about a 2% dividend yield, as well as returning about 5% in share buybacks. So overall, you get about 7% of the price of the stock returned to you in cash that Apple buys back uh, in stock and dividends. It's also very high quality. It has a very strong balance sheet. It has lots of cash, which means that it can acquire other companies mm -hmm. very easily, just like it recently bought Beat Electronics. So it can get okay. growth through those acquisitions. I'm going to jump in because I want to squeeze in the last one, an area that you call industrials with free, free cash flow. And you say airlines fit this. Southwest Airlines, LUV is the ticker symbol there. Uh, can yep. you just give one or two reasons why you like this? 
Really strong balance sheet, great free cash flows, one of the best uh, balance sheets out of all the airlines, and their acquisition of AirTran has really helped them grow. All right, Aaron, thank you so much uh, for coming on the program. Aaron Gibbs of S&P Capital IQ.